I'm at my doctor's appointment. May or may not have cried. My head is a little bit quieter. Three, two, one. Arguing again, arguing about something so simple. Make it clear, tell me why you're running back to him. Feeling insecure, feeling like there's more to your character. Every tear that you cry is worth it in the end. But baby, tell me, how have you not figured it Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you guys are new here. My name is Kathy and today is a little day in my life vlog. Where to start? If you don't follow me on Instagram already, I'll put my Instagram right here for you guys. But I shared yesterday. Of course I thought about like should I share this, should I not? Just because it's so personal to me, it's vulnerable sharing anything that is not happy or like, you know curated i shared that yesterday and the amount of people that messaged me about how they were feeling the same way i was blown away i was so shocked first off at the support that i got thank you guys so much for just being such sweet humans and caring for other people that you don't even know like i think that's just amazing and so genuine and secondly the fact that i am not alone and when i shared that i was so scared to share it but then knowing that other people are going through it made me also feel so much less alone basically today on the agenda i am currently i'm at my doctor's appointment or i'm in the parking garage for it i'm very proud of myself if you know me or you've been watching my vlogs i am late to everything i can't show up anywhere on time but yesterday um the receptionist told me to show up at 10 30 for my 11 o'clock appointment so i was like okay i'll show up at 10 30 which is so brilliant like to me that's such a key thing to say show up at 10 30 30 minutes early before your appointment because then that means i really can be early anytime i'm about to leave the house i do different things i get sidetracked and then by the time i'm ready to leave the house i only have like 10 minutes to spare and so i'm always rushing out of the door frantic i've been dealing with some things and i've always dealt with these things for many many years as long as i can remember until now um and i've always thought what i've felt is so normal i thought other people are supposed to feel chaos in their brain i thought other people were always stressed and anxious and would burst out in anger just like i would things like that i thought that was totally normal those episodes would happen and then maybe a few days later a couple days later i'll be fine i'll think wow that was it like my 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 sad days my bad days are over i'm good as new again and so then i forget and i push aside how i was feeling and then it comes back again and so after many many years i've considered therapy i only went one time i talked about using better help i met with them once and that was it um and then i haven't done anything for it since but i know now it's it's good for me to go because it's now impacting my life more i used to be able to manage a little bit more and now it feels unmanageable i'm affecting the people around me and that's how i knew i need to make an appointment and do something about whatever is going on up here so yeah that helps encourage you to seek help if you feel like you've been pushing pushing something off which i always do anyways i push everything off um, until it gets really bad and then i'm like okay i should probably go do something about this i knew i would be anxious after my appointment so i brought my yoga mat and i'm hoping to sign up for a 12 o'clock like hot yoga class because that always helps me i even have my comfort drink i got a tall ice brown sugar shaken espresso one pump of white mocha and light ice extra oat milk tall is the perfect size for me i hope to update you after and just know that you are not alone and i have always been so afraid to like speak up about it i'm just excited to share this with you and it helps me to also vent because i'm doing this alone and i'm honestly scared and i have you guys with me and yeah let's do this together back from my appointment um it went well i thought it would be worse um may or may not have cried they were asking me like the they were doing the anxiety screening and 
I just, the questions they were asking, it just hit so close to home, even though they're just basic questions like, do you feel like you're a failure? Do you feel like you've been more angry recently? And then I just broke down in tears. So, I mean, that felt good. But um, anyways, my doctor um, has diagnosed me and I'm not surprised, but I'm, I don't know. I feel a little bit of relief and I feel like I wanna cry again. Um, I don't know. It's like a lot of things just built up that I feel like I wish I would have taken care of before. Um, but I am proud that I have, I'm proud that I've made it this far to like an appointment. I, if you knew me, then you know I do not make doctor's appointments. I don't make dentist appointments. I don't do anything that requires me to have a little bit of responsibility. I don't know, like I feel even scared to share because I'm like, is this too personal? I don't know. Basically he diagnosed me with anxiety, depression, and ADHD. And he did refer me to a psychiatrist. Um, I got my blood work done just to have more clarity. I am going to see a psychiatrist so they can do a deeper evaluation. Um, but I am going to be on medication, and that's the thing that is really scary to me. He prescribed this, so if you guys know of this medication, let me know how it works for you. I know it's different for everyone, so obviously your experience is gonna be different from mine, but I am prescribed Bupropion XL, Welbertrin XL. That's the, that's the gist of what's going on. I have my psychiatry appointment soon. They're gonna reach out to me, um, but he did refer me, so hopefully that's, that is in the works, um, but I am happy to update you guys once I am done with my psychiatry appointment because I think that will give me more clear answers and root causes of what's actually going on. Since I am early, it's only 11.36, I have a yoga class at 12. Anytime I'm feeling nervous, anxious, or I just need to release some like energy, I will do a hot yoga class. It works wonders. Hot yoga done, feeling like a new woman. I literally forgot my water. I'm for a tall I should have gotten a grande but I don't really want that much caffeine thank you so much taste test. I got the tall ice matcha latte with vanilla sweet cream cold foam, which I never ever get in my drinks. Oat milk, two pumps of vanilla. I was just feeling a lighter drink, not a coffee. Whoa. It's like vanilla creaminess. Mm, 10 out of 10. I love that. That's so good. Anyways, hello you guys, enough coffee tea talk. Hello, it has been a full week since I last checked in with you guys after my appointment. To be honest, when I was filming that, I feel like I was very shocked, overwhelmed, emotional, um, and kind of lost, honestly. Something that I needed to hear for a long time, like the clarity of there is nothing wrong with me, that me feeling different was 
for a reason and not that I was dumb or too anxious or anything like that where I felt inadequate because of my anxiety or my ADHD. I just wanted to update you guys. It's been a full week, like I said. It's been a full week since I've been on Wellbutrin. First off, I wanted to mention that yes, mental health is such a big topic. It's one of those topics where some people feel comfortable talking about it, some people don't. Um, and I feel like it's controversial because it's like, how much can you share? How much do you wanna share? Um, and the one thing I want to mention is that everyone is on their own mental health journey. Everyone feels different. You may, someone else that you know may have anxiety, but they deal with it in a different way or they react in different ways. No one's symptoms or feelings are the same, but your feelings are valid. I hope you guys feel the same where you don't feel alone in all of this because mental health can make you feel very lonely and very secluded and so i just want you to know that you're not alone and that a lot of people care for you and there will be good days no one knows exactly how you're feeling no one knows what is going on up here or in your heart so there's not a person that can sit there and tell you well you shouldn't feel like this or that you don't need medicine because you don't seem that extreme you're not crying every single day you get up every day you have motivation but like i said everyone's journey is different and there's not any single person that can tell you different Differently except for you. I want to touch a lot more on my ADHD. Me having ADHD causes the anxiety because of the disorganization that I feel and me even talking right now is so much more clear and focused and just more straightforward. Like I feel more clear and focused more than I've ever been. To be honest like if I were trying to film this clip by myself I would be all over the place. I'd have to cut the clips a million different times but so far I feel like I it's like coming out more naturally. Some of the symptoms that I've always dealt with, I guess, um, and how I have always, always perceived ADHD as something totally different. I have always thought ADHD meant you're fidgeting, um, forgetfulness, and just moving around, hyperactivity, which that can look like that, but in adults, it looks so much more different, and that's why I always thought I was just a little bit different. I never thought anything of it until I started reading more about ADHD and um, just doing more research because I've always felt like this wasn't normal. Like comparing myself to other people, I would be so much more forgetful. I'd always be late. I didn't have the motivation to do very simple tasks and everyone else around me did. And so I did some research and it turns out that adult ADHD and childhood ADHD looks totally different and that makes so much sense to me now. I'm gonna read off my phone some of the symptoms that I've had. I was failing a lot of classes. I would get C's, D's, and a couple of B's, maybe one A I think I've gotten, but middle school, junior high, high school, I never ever made good grades. Now, for a long time, I just thought, I, I truthfully thought I was dumb and that I just could not focus. I kid you not, like, throughout my classes, I would be zoned out the whole time. And I would snap out of it and be like, wow, how long was I actually zoning out or daydreaming? I remember in class, I would literally sit there and tell myself, focus, 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 and then try to zone in. But it would, I would literally just veer off. And not because I didn't wanna pay attention. I think that's a misconception that I think some people think about ADHD people is that, well, they're just, they just wanna pay, they just don't wanna pay attention, so they're not going to, they just zone off. But it is very hard to focus on something whenever your mind is telling you that you're disinterested or you're not interested in this. And so it just veers off and it's very hard to sit there and be like, oh, just focus because our brains just don't work like that. Another thing, I could never finish a task or I'd start little tasks and then move on, get distracted, do something else. Elementary school, middle school, you have a little bit more routine. You're less, um, you have a little bit less freedom. You know, you have teachers telling you what to do. You have your set routine, your set schedule during the day. But then when you go to college and high school, that routine, that schedule, that consistency isn't there anymore and I took seven full years to finish college when I should have taken only four, which is fine. Um, I went through a lot of challenges during that time that made me a stronger, more passionate person and teacher. The fact that I took seven years says a lot because I was failing my classes. I would skip them. I never knew when I had homework, um, very disorganized, and I never knew what was going on in class 
ever. And so I remember one day I was sitting in one of my college courses and they were like, okay, it's test day. And I was like, wait, today's test day? Because I never showed up to class. I would only show up a few times, like the max amount of times I could until I got kicked out of the class. Or I would not realize that there was a test, I would never study, so then I ended up failing the class and then I would have to pay out of pocket myself because I didn't want my parents to know that I failed the class, so then I would pay to retake the class using all of the money that I was making at my current job at Chuck E. Cheese. I was working crazy hours to pay for my college courses because I was failing them. It's not because I was disinterested or I was like, I don't care about school. My brain was just in a constant state of like, anxiety and disorganization and not knowing how to prioritize in the slightest and that's another ADHD symptom um, that adults have is prioritizing. I am the worst prioritizer. I will do small things that don't really matter when I should be looking at like a bigger picture. I will wait to the very last minute to get something done or fixed because I don't see the importance of it until fear drives into my brain and says, okay, Kathy, you should probably do this now. For example, I had a tiny little chip in my windshield and I've been driving with it for a few months. Finally, this crack had been getting literally so huge on my windshield and I was like, okay, I probably shouldn't wait anymore. And then I finally get it fixed when all I needed to do was simply call someone, get it fixed and be done. Another thing that I noticed with everything else is that I've always felt anxiety and it's normal to feel anxiety, to feel nervous, to feel anxious. My anxiety was starting to take over my life, my feelings, the people around me. This shouldn't be a constant battle every single day. I'm not joking you. I was anxious about every small thing you could imagine. All these small little things that I would get onto people about, especially the people that are closest to me know exactly what my anxiety was like because I took it out on the people that were closest to me. Not that my feelings weren't valid, but I thought every single thing that I was anxious about was so big that my emotions were so huge. There's no way that no one understands this because it, to me, the feeling was so intense that I it just took over my heart, my chest. I would literally just feel so achy. And you know that feeling when you feel like something is bothering you, everything bothered me. And it wouldn't go away unless I lashed out. And after a while, I realized that this is not how I wanna live my life. This is not how I want other people to perceive me because I know myself well enough um, to notice that that isn't the real me. <sighs> Man whenever you are going through it that anxiety or the adhd or the depression it it feels like it takes over your life and you don't realize what you're going through until you snap out of it or you realize what's going on and then you decide to get help which is exactly what i did um, and i've been telling brandon and the people around me i'm going to get help i'm going to get help and then i would never do it until things got bad again adhd depression anxiety all of that runs in my family and so it was really important for me to look into that early on because it's not like it just came out of nowhere. Anyways, those were some of my symptoms that were big to me. I might be missing some things, but feel so much better. Um, I'm not completely and fully this perfect person. I'm actively working on myself. Medicine is not a fix all. I need to actively be trying to be nicer to myself, to be nicer to the people around me and actively think about the relationships um, that I'm forming and try to maintain those relationships. I've always been really bad at keeping friendships and keeping relationships people with ADHD have because they have a hard time prioritizing what is important how do you stay consistent and motivated to reach out to people that maybe you haven't talked to in a while or things like that and okay my camera cut off but I know that I can always go to her and she will always talk to me judgment free it's amazing so Madison if you're watching thank you so much I love you I have so many people in my life that support me I think a misconception is that if someone looks great on the outside or they're smiling or that they're happy or their life seems put together I think some people just think well there's their case isn't severe enough or that their whatever they're feeling is probably not that bad but I just want to let you know that it's so easy sometimes for people to mask how they're feeling um, and I definitely do that I don't show how I'm feeling just because that's just not who I am but at home, I can't, I can let loose and I can like do those things, but I don't want my partner or my family to feel like I'm always taking it out on them because they don't deserve that. 
if you have any experiences or, or if you're going through the same journey as me i would love to know down below if you're, if you're comfortable sharing um just so that other people know that they're not alone and we can go through this together um i welcome all advice tips and also if you have anything that you want to talk about i'm open on instagram i love replying to you guys and just talking to you i talked to a lot of people already about it the only way that i can explain how i feel after one week is that i feel so much clear-minded my negative thoughts that were constantly in my head all the time are mainly gone i don't have those negative feelings i don't have oh my goodness i can't tell you how many times i feel anxious over small things and those small things that are happening now i don't have that ache in my chest and it feels so freaking good <laughs> like truly amazing I feel a little bit quieter my brain my head is a little bit quieter and it's so nice i feel like i can focus on exactly what i want to talk about i can focus on the things that i want to get done for that day without feeling the constant overwhelm like oh my god i never got it done i never got it done or i'm so overwhelmed already because my thoughts were just constantly going on in my head i don't know let me know if you guys notice this too i just i just feel like i can actually talk and not feel so confused otherwise i'm excited to start the school vlogs again start to get back into the routine of teaching and balancing work and mom life um I love doing it in about a week from now i will be in my classroom so look out for classroom setup vlogs i had to take every single thing down in my room so my classroom is very bare and i want to change some things up i love reorganizing and just making my space feel fresh and new it's not gonna be a full classroom setup it'll be a more like a mini classroom setup i hope you guys stick around i hope you subscribe down below like this video if you enjoyed it and i hope to see you guys next time in my next video once again, I seriously love you guys so much. I am so thankful and so grateful for the support that you guys have shown me on here and on Instagram. Thank you guys, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!